All right, everybody's admitted and we are recording. Okay, um, just before we get started, um, general announcement, um, you know, pursuant to the governor's uh, ruling back in March of 2020, we are suspending the certain provision of the open meeting laws. And um, as such, we'll be doing this meeting via Zoom. Um, my name is Brian Heath, I'm the chair with us is Jerry Chipman. He is the vice chair and Anna Klimas is one of the members. Uh, also with us is Jennifer Burke from the uh, Community Eco Economic Development Center Director, excuse me, Director, um, and Jasmine Farinacci. Is that right, Jasmine? It is. All right. Um, so at, at this time, the mics of everyone are muted and the board's mics will be unmuted through the whole meeting. As it appears on the agenda, the project representative's mics will be unmuted. If the project is a public hearing and allows for public comment, we'll ask uh, that you use the chat feature to ask your questions by listing your name and address and your question. Uh, the chair will recognize all questions in order. You can also use the raise my hand feature in the participant menu and you'll be uh, unmuted when the chair recognizes you. Again, please state your name and address before asking a question. If, you, if you're on the phone, you can uh, dial star nine to raise your hand and ask a question. So we'll get started with the meeting and up first on the agenda um, are the Nestlers from 10 Brownfield. They're looking for a uh, variance under section 2.96 in regards to the expanded living space for an in-law. Um, the, the stat, the bylaw as written right now uh, allows for 600 square feet. Um, the Nestlers are requesting to convert some of an existing 1,000 foot storage space into a single bedroom uh, living space for, for relatives of, of, of theirs. So at this time, we will let the Nestlers in and have them present and then we will make uh, Ruling on the on the request. Do that name unless this person is done. Um, is this Debbie? Are you part of this petition? Well, it's Carolyn uh, Bernard Nestler. I don't see that name here in our meeting, so. Hmm, this could be a quick one. <laughs> so yeah, so we, the only um, people that aren't board members are Jeff Engler and Debbie Bocino. So I'm not sure which so they must she's- must be here for the uh, 85 the Ms. Nestler did not have an attorney that I'm aware oh, of. You were just talking about a female attorney. I didn't know the name, I didn't know. No, not for her, oh. unfortunately. She had done this application herself. So I don't know if the board just wants to continue it until we can see if she can attend the next meeting or if the board can take action. I'd like to hear, personally, I'd like to hear from them. So I'd, I'd suggest making a motion to continue. Um, and until uh, the next meeting or when they they contact with um, whoever is going to be the direct person for the ZBA in town. Jasmine, did, did they have a copy of the, the link to the meeting? She does, yes. Okay. I'll just... That, that would be in the, um, right on the email. webpage on the... as well, wouldn't it? It it's is. On, yeah, it's on the town calendar. It's on the agenda. So it's a, yeah. it's publicly available. Okay. All so right. Sure um, this person up here isn't in mm -hmm. here for this, Debbie Ocino. I don't believe so. Um, she's unmuted if she'd like to speak. I want to see if she wants to speak. And if she's not for this, it, it, here for this, that's fine. We can continue. She's unmuted if she'd like to speak. Debbie? Hello, Debbie. 
Okay, well, I would make a motion to continue the 10 Brownfield Drive uh, variance application until we hear further from the applicants. Oh, you have to continue to a date and time certain. So we'd like to continue it to your next, unless you just wanna um, make a motion to withdraw without prejudice, you have to continue to a date and time certain. So your next meeting would be April 14th if you'd like to continue it to April 14th. You can do that. At 7 p.m. So if someone would make a motion to continue the uh, request, the variance request until the April 14th meeting at 7 I would make a motion to continue the 10 Brownfield Drive application until the April 14th meeting at 7 p.m. Do we have a second? There we go. All in favor? Aye. 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 Our motion carries. So the next on the agenda is a uh, notice or a request for a notice of uh, insubstantial change to the 85 Plymouth Street, um, formerly the Burnell uh, 40B. Uh, reading through it, apparently the, the, the request is in relation to some signage and the bus stop structure. So if we- um, uh, Yes, I've unmuted the applicant if, he, or if he'd like to. So who will be presenting for um, SLV Bridgewater? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, for the record, uh, Jeff Angler from SLV Bridgewater. Uh, apologies, uh, I'm transitioning from my phone to my laptop, and I had my babysitter cancel on me tonight, so uh, please bear with me as we just walk through this really quickly. Um, yes, we are before you this evening requesting a, an insubstantial change to our permit uh, as way of background and context. We uh, obviously permitted this project under a comprehensive permit, but as is uh, you know, usually the case, we did not have a signage package at the time of the permitting because that's typically a detail that happens later in the process. So we've retained Metro, uh, who is one of the preeminent sign fabricators in Massachusetts as our contractor. And I know for the board is in possession of our proposed signage package um, for the for the uh, the development, uh, including a sign on Plymouth Street, the signage that will go on Burl Ave above um, the entrance, uh, as well as our interior signs in the parking uh, area. So, um, and then we 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 included um, uh, some images of a, of our. A bus waiting area, which which was required uh, in the permit, but which we did not have a detail. So we submitted the package and we're before you tonight uh, asking that you consider it a, an insubstantial change, which we firmly believe it is uh, in accordance with the regulations, the 40B regulations. And, um, and that's what we would like to discuss tonight and happy to answer any questions uh, about any of the, the submittal. Um, I, I know, all right, so we, we do have the package. I've, I've personally looked at them all and I'm sure everybody else has as well. Um, the bus enclosure that you've submitted, is, is it just the enclosure or is it also the, the bench included in there? Uh, there will be, a, there will be a, a bench included. Okay. And as far as the sign, uh, the one out on Plymouth Street, I look okay to me, uh, the rendition. And then it's the only others is the sign that would go on the facade of the front of the building, correct? Correct. And- um, Parking signs. I know, I know um, Jasmine is scrolling through, she's on the bus stop, but if uh, she scrolls to what would be second, third, keep going, a little bit more, a little bit more. That, that one, that, yeah, that shows, uh, or the, the next, the one below, it shows, below shows it on the building. Shows it okay. on the building. So 
just to be clear, the only thing we're talking about, the only thing we're talking about tonight and in, in this request is in regards to the sign and the bus. Um, 100%. That's the, the, all the other elements of the plan and the program and the permit are unchanged. We're just asking the board tonight to accept the signage package that was submitted that will become part of the, of the approved plan set of record. And it's what the building perm, the building inspector, uh, it will make us adhere to uh, as we move forward with the process. Okay. Do uh, any of the other members, Jerry or Anna, have any questions for Jeff? I don't, I have no issues with it. Does the Starbucks come with a bus shelter? Can you guarantee that the Starbucks will go in behind the bus? Yeah, <laughs> I, I wish, I wish. <laughs> Not quite sure it does, Ian. Yeah. All right, um, I, again, I have no issues with the sign package or the enclosure as, as provided here. If someone would care to, to make the motion that the changes are as, Stated in substantial. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman, that uh, yeah. the uh, changes as presented um, appear to be insubstantial. You have a second on that? I would second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it looks like the motion passes and we've designated these changes as insubstantial. All right, Mr. Angler. If uh, you have Everything's nothing going. else, you're you're good to go. I'm sorry. Somehow I went back on mute. I was uh, thanking the board. I appreciate the time. <laughs> if we if we could um, not to nitpick, but there was a little bit of confusion. We had a modification several months ago, and and the building inspector was asking for action of the board. So, uh, which the board clearly approved, but we didn't have minutes or an email or something so i don't know if that's something council or jasmine can simply you know write something up that says you know the applicant uh we approve the the request is insubstantial and accept the sign package as submitted or it doesn't have to be anything more than that i believe we sent a letter last time did you not receive it um, I'm not sure we did, but if, if you could do similarly this time, that would be great. Yep. We always send a letter when there's the modification. Okay. Okay. Super. All okay. right. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you to the board. Um, and, uh, I, I guess that's it. All Thanks, right. Chef. Thank you. All right. Um, Have a good night. Mr. Chairman, it seems that there's been some technical difficulties with, um, our first applicant. They were here under that Debbie name and, I've asked them to sign in as um, the call in. So they may be here on the phone now. Let me try to, did you just let in a phone number, Jasmine? Okay. I did, yes, it's that. It's 617-549. So if you're on the phone and you can hit star, I believe it's star nine or is it star nine, Jasmine? Star I nine. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we can. Yep, we can hear you now. Oh, oh yeah. thank God. Oh, God. We're having time <laughs> You you wouldn't believe the uh, histrionics behind the scene here. Do we need a motion to reopen this hearing, Jennifer? Yes. Yes, yes please. Do. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Do we, uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we will now re reopen uh, the hearing for the variance request under the 2.96 the by uh, Bridgewater bylaws. Um, apparently, we we have the applicants here, uh, the Nestlers, and they're are requesting a 400 square foot variance in relation to the 600 square feet allowed under 2.96 for an in-law apartment. Um, if you want to give us some general understanding of the situation. Sure, so um, my husband and I just moved to Bridgewater. Um, my sister and brother-in-law are currently living in an apartment where um, they're probably likely going to have to move within the next several months. They are um, getting older. They're thinking about retiring soon, and they're sort of caught in that middle income level where they would not qualify for um, help with housing, but can't really afford a place of their own. So we just thought it was a perfect opportunity. The house that we found 
has an existing space of, um, it's already in the house. It's 43 by 23, I believe. Already has heat, lights, and like exterior walls and a subfloor. The way it's set up is you would, um, when you walk in the front door of my home, you go up to the top of the stairs and on the left over the garage is the space. And that's the space that we'd like to convert to an in-law for them. Okay, I'm just looking through. Uh, Anna and Jerry, do you have any questions for the applicants? Um, well, first, Mr. Chairman, uh, just as uh, kind of a, I guess, a point of order, um, in the past, we've um, been under the impression that the bylaw is changing to 800 square feet. And um, so maybe at the outset, we could use that as the baseline. Um, because my understanding is everybody has accepted 800, but it just hasn't been printed. Am I correct on that, Jennifer? Um, that is correct. Well, it hasn't been approved yet, but that is the intention. Once it goes back to the council for approval, it will change to 800. Okay. So could we, um, I guess, stipulate, <laughs> is that the term, that um, the baseline should be 800 and we're talking about a nexus of 800 to 1,000? I'm, I'm fine with that, Anna. Um, my comment would be, um, I'm in favor, of it. if it's 23 by 43, we're talking about 989 total square feet, uh, just for accuracy. Um, but um, as I was reading through all of this, I was thinking that if um, the applicants had gone to the building department and requested um, a permit to finish their garage and put in um, a living room or a family room, whatever you want to call it, um, a bedroom and a full bath, um, they could get that permit for the, the full total square footage. Also, in that living room, they could put in a wet box with a plumb sink, um, a water line for the freezer to make ice cubes, and they could have a microwave there for popcorn, and um, they could have a toaster oven. What they kind of have is a stove. And um, so I'm looking at this and I'm saying it's, it's a, if the 23 by 43 is accurate, we're 189 square feet that we're talking about. It's completely enclosed There's other than the back stairway. Um, and frankly, I, I just see it as, um, um, well, I will vote in favor, I guess is the way I'll put it. I guess, I, I mean, just to, uh, to a large degree, I kind of agree with you. It's an existing structure. Uh, there's no additional construction other than some interior work. I have a general question, because um, I just don't know. Is is Brown um, Street on town store or is that septic? It's septic. It's septic. I wish Steve were here. So my only, I guess the question is adding another bedroom and bathroom. They'd have to, they have to get permission from the Board of Health to, unless there's, they have to run their septic system by the Board of Health to make sure it complies with an additional bedroom. Yeah, that's, that's I, the key. So, you know, I did speak, I'm sorry, I did speak to the Board of Health um, when we were going through this and we are, we have a three bedroom home and a septic for four. They told me I was fine. Okay. I spoke. And it's also on the tax file. If you look at the records on the house, it, it says those same things. Steve won't issue a building permit if Eric doesn't sign off on the septic system. Okay. All right. No, um, I mean, again, looking at it, um, it, is, it is, the variance would be granted under uh, 2.96. So it's strictly for an in-law, correct? Correct. Jen? Oh, sorry. Correct. Yes. Yeah, that's all it can be used yes. for. That's just so that we, we understand, yeah. you know, and, and the applicant understands this is strictly the variance being granted is for an in-law only. It can't be, you know, rented out to unrelated third parties. That's correct. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I looked at it, I read through it. I, the way I kind of looked at this was, I don't think granting the, the variance uh, would be, you know, counter to the, the bylaws as it's written. Um, I think in relation to looking at the structure, the existing structure, if you were to 
pare it down to 800 square feet, it's kind of crazy because it's a, a long rectangular space that you're just going to cut out. Yes, you could cut it out, but I kind of think that's a little crazy to do. Um, so the 200 square feet to me isn't, isn't all that out of line. Um, Anna, we haven't heard from you. Do you have any issues, questions? No, I don't. I would agree um, with Jerry and his math and, you know, it's 189 um, square feet. And so I really don't see any issues with this. All right. If, is there anybody else out there, uh, Jasmine? Because we, it, this is open to the public. So we just have to open it up to any public comment. I don't see anybody raising their hand and there's nothing in the chat. Okay. All right. Then um, if someone would want to make a motion to uh, grant the variance under section uh, 2.96 in regards to the, uh, as the bylaw is written, we, we, I, I believe Jennifer, we do have to grant the full variance from 600. That's correct. That is what the bylaw says. Yes. At this time. So um, utilizing utilizing for a rough measure of 1,000 square feet, we would be granting a 400 square foot variance to the 2.96 uh, bylaw for an in-law apartment. If um, someone would want, care to make that motion. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman, um, to approve under 2.96 um, a maximum of 1,000. Is that what we're going with, the 1,000 number? Yeah, just, well, we don't have, uh, you know, determinative, okay. definitive, I didn't see. Okay, the maximum uh, area would be 1,000 square feet. Um, this doesn't um, um, cause substantial detriment to the public good or um, um, derogate from the intent and purpose of the bylaw. Okay. We have a second to that. I would second that motion. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, Ms. Nessler, um, your variance is granted. <clears throat> and Jasmine, so, or Jen, you want to? Yeah, so you'll get, uh, the decision will be typed up probably in the next couple of days. It will be filed with the town clerk as soon as the board can come in to sign it. Um, there's a 20 day appeal period. Um, after such time, you'll be, if there's no appeals filed, you'll be able to get your building permit, but you need to wait the, that time period before you can get a building permit. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it so much. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's that, Jen? I didn't hear you. Somebody just joined. I don't know if you want to find out if he, what he was here for. Uh, who joined? Uh, Mr. Vaughn? Yes. You're on mute. Uh, I think I have to ask him to. I just asked him. I think he's looking for his on mute. Sorry about that. It's okay. okay. It's okay. We just um, finished our meeting. What project were you here for? Oh, I was with the um, the SEB Bridgewater in Substantial Change. Oh, yeah. We sorry we we thought it was no just kidding uh <laughs> we we voted it as an insubstantial change um and jeff presented so we, we're all set with that one you're all good okay i i assumed as much as it seemed like it's gonna be, be uh, a, a problem um interestingly enough though you know this whole time i had clicked the the link that was on the zba agenda and i was in a waiting room that said that the meeting had not begun and I actually had called the phone number that was also on the agenda and I got the same message. How did you end up getting in? Hmm. Sorry, do you mind me asking? How did you end up getting in? I went to the, the town's website and I, I, cause I said, you know, I, I thought this just doesn't make any sense. So I went to the town's website and clicked on the, um, uh, there's a little like TV box on, yeah. on the town's website. Mm -hmm. So I, I got in through there, so. Um, and we'll have to double check that. Thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate that. Yeah, that, no, no problem. All right, well, um, it, all's well that ends well. So thank you guys very much.
All right, thank Take you. Care. Thanks. Good night. Could be, this could be a problem if we had a public hearing and people couldn't access the meeting. Can someone else check in? Matt, well, that, Mr. Hall. Well, that Debbie, um, well, what? She was know. logged in, but we she couldn't was, hear her. She was part of with, with Miss Nestor, Nestler. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know why, Jasmine? The meeting ID on the agenda is different than the meeting ID in the calendar invite. Oh no. Yeah, we have to fix that. That's gonna be a problem. Do we need to redo this meeting for both of them? Um, I don't know, I have to find out. It's a good question. We've never had this issue before. I don't know how that happened. Um, so can, can we inquire at M Hall 7, who they are and what they're here for? Sure. Can I they're here about the variants. Which one is that? Um, uh, the one Ted Brownfield. Did. But, but who is it, D? M Hall 7, I don't know. Can what you ask them to unmute? I Yeah, I just did, I don't know. Hello. Hi. Hello? Yes, it's Mark Hall, um, 16 Brownfield Drive. Okay. Um, we had, now Mr. Hall, when did you, when did you sign on? Uh, just now, because the link that on the agenda that I was given didn't work. It would put me to a meeting that never started. And then I just happened to go back to your website and found that the agenda was posted twice. Okay, so we're Jen. gonna have to read. We're gonna have to redo this meeting, I think. It's I okay. Too. Can you tell me what was their determination? Um, well, we had uh, um, the applicant was on, and unfortunately, for for the reasons as you kind of stated, which we just were alerted to, uh, nobody else was there. We did hear out the applicant and granted their variance. Okay. I don't have the complaint or anything. I was just curious. Yeah, um, but I'm I think not legally sure. though we're kind of in a quandary. So yeah, I, I think we need to reschedule. I think you're right. So um, yeah. So why don't we close this meeting and Jasmine and I will figure out the administrative piece of it um, tomorrow. Um, I mean, because there's nothing we can do about it right now. So right. we'll no, um, everybody's going. have to, yeah, we'll have to reschedule um, and figure it out. So I apologize right, well, for that. I'm not sure how it happened. I apologize. Yeah, and well, it's just, likely we'll have to re-notice everything uh, and do it in a couple of weeks. All right. It should, it should go fairly quickly. We've already, we've already had the dress rehearsal. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so does, well, actually now that, now the, now the meeting is technically over for the public portion of it. We, can we at least approve the minutes from the February 24th meeting? Sure. <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we don't, I, I would take it there's no need for a director's report. No. So Jen, does Not it make tonight. sense for us to continue those? Well, because we didn't, did we close them? I don't think we closed them, did we? We did, didn't we? Well, we the, the, to close the uh, hearing. You we didn't, decision, okay. So, but we didn't close so dwell, the Yeah, we didn't so close the them. So Dwell 85 wasn't a hearing, so I'm not worried about that one. Yeah. That one we can just do. It's fine. The other one, um, you didn't close the hearing, but you granted the variance. So I suppose you could continue it, and then we could just arguably re-notice the abutters. I, I think we have to, can you pull up the, Jasmine, can you pull up the legal ad so I can see what, do you put the Zoom link in the legal ad? What do you say in the legal ad? 
No, I don't put the link in the ad. Yeah, it just says gather on the Bridgewater. Yeah. Dot gov. Yeah, post it to the calendar on the town's website is what it says. Okay, so that sent people to the right link then. Yeah, well, it, it just sends them to the link for the bridgewater.org. Right. And then Which they can go the... to the town calendar, yeah. Post to um, the calendar of the town's website. Okay. So that so we probably don't have to do a different legal ad though, but we may have to renotice the butters. So yeah, if you want to just continue it to April 14th, 14th. at 7 p.m., um, then we'll have to let the uh, the applicant know that there was a unfortunate technical glitch that we have to just do this all over again in two weeks. So the issue is we don't know who, who tried and we never saw them. Is that it? That's correct. It, it, the, it appears that I'm looking at the agenda. There's three different meeting IDs. I don't know how that happened. Okay. So is one meeting ID listed. Then if you says to call, use this meeting ID, which is a different meeting ID. Then if you click the zoning link, there's a completely third different meeting ID, none of which are the meeting ID that was sent to us in the, the invitation. So, so I'm not sure how that happened. So are we, 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 are, we are going to continue the public hearing is what we're, we're going to do now. Do we need to pull back our votes because we're, um, we're going to start a hearing over basically. Yeah, yeah I would rescind. Yeah, we, we, I think I would we, rescind your vote. Yeah, because um, we didn't hear any public comment, even though we opened it up, there wasn't anybody there. Right. Um, we didn't hear any public comment before we made our vote. So, right. you know, just, just opening up the meeting again on the 14th to hear public comment really wouldn't work since we already did the vote. So we technically, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to need to do the whole meeting again. Okay. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion to rescind my motion to approve, I guess. Is that how I'm doing it? Jasmine, did you, excuse me, I'm sorry for one second. There's a thing in the chat. I guess they're still on the applicant. Jasmine, did you post two different agendas? One on March 19th and one on March 22nd? No, I didn't post one on the 22nd. I posted it. They're the saying in the chat there are two different agendas posted. March 19th was posted incorrect and March 22nd was posted correctly. Hmm. No, because I did it last week. Okay. Yeah. Um, Well, all right, we'll have to figure it out. Yeah, okay, sorry, Jerry, go ahead and you can make your motion. Um, what did I just do? <laughs> uh, I made a motion to um, rescind my um, motion to approve. Second. I think Brian is frozen. This night, <laughs> swear to God. <laughs> I take back what I said. Jennifer, I still don't, while well, he's frozen, I still don't understand how that other gentleman said he got on. I'm not seeing this. Oh, so if you, say, if you say on after the board leaves, you and I can go over it. I'll explain it to you. Thank you. There he is. Chairman's back. <laughs> You're oh, you're really muted, Brian. Is he frozen again? He's muted. Oh, okay. I'm unmuted, right? Yeah, yeah you're right. unmuted. Okay. Do you second? I seconded it. Are you in All favor? Right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. So we've rescinded our initial. Approved. 
and we will need to redo it again on the 14th. So I will make a motion to continue the public hearing on um, Brown 10 Brown Field Drive to April 14th at 7 p.m. I'll second that motion. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we have something for the 14th. Yeah, that's all we have now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So sorry, guys. That's all right. Not a big deal. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Well, yeah, I thought we did. I thought we had done really well tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we really did, but uh, hey, it, it, this has been a long time since we've had uh, two meetings in a row as scheduled. Yeah. So. This could be the start of a trend. We'll, we'll get it right the next time. I'm for sure. All right. Thank you, ladies. Jerry. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Jasmine, yeah. hang on for a few yeah. minutes. Bye. Bye, everybody. All right. I'm not sure how you did this agenda, Jasmine but it's completely screwed up. Can't happen again. Right. So if you wanna pull up the agenda, I'll show you what's happened. Oh, stop recording.